Ladies and gentlemen, the following is scheduled for one fall. It is time for that way cool wrestling show. Hey everybody, welcome to That Way Cool Wrestling Show. My name is Danny J, along with Charles Gemini Gregory and Mad Mark Lindsay. We're here for hey a little, what's going on? We're here for a little micro edition of That Way Cool Wrestling Show. We had some big news, some interesting news that popped up uh, just recently. And um, my dog's even excited about it. <laughs> and what happened was Billy Corrigan went on uh, a quick interview just recently. And he announced, amongst a couple other things, that they are going to be be on TV as of this October, October of 2019, in the Atlanta area. So, guys, everybody knows what this could potentially be based on everything, but we wanted to talk about that today. Want to say hello to Charles. Want to say hello to Mark. We are right here on YouTube. Make sure you're hitting the subscribe button down below. Make sure you're sharing the channel to everybody else. If you want to send out a link, it's www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash DJB Productions Network. Make sure you check that out. Get everybody on here. We want to build everything up. We have a lot of great stuff coming to you from that way cool wrestling show. Guys, NWA, Atlanta, TV, what's happening here? <laughs> I'll tell you what's happening. Um, we all know that the NWA is a traditional uh, wrestling from back in the day. But, man, with MLW, NXT, WWE, Impact Wrestling, I think this has a chance to do great things. Absolutely. I'm, I'm pulling for the NWA. But it's too much wrestling on TV going to dilute it. That's the question I want to pose to you guys. Uh, I think it will. Um, and I, hopefully I'm wrong, but having the NWA on TBS, it is a great nostalgia act. I think we all want that. I just hope that they can survive. Well, I mean, here's the deal. I'm thinking that, and, and excuse us while we get through to, here we go. Uh, it's new technology, Dan. You have a learning curve. It's, you know. I do have a learning curve with this. Yes. Uh, but here's the deal. Um, there's a lot that goes along with this. Billy Corrigan from the jumpstart when he bought the NWA, was going for tradition. Tradition with a new mindset, in a sense. And we saw this with the championships that he's using. He's using the old school 1985-84 championship belts, the tag team titles, the national heavyweight title, which I got to call a little bullshit on because the national title is the former United States title. It's not the national yeah. title. Okay. But we'll let you go. We'll let you go with it. And the uh, ring aprons at the Crockett Cup, he used the uh, old school – NWA golden blue ring apron, which was yeah. really cool. Yeah. And, and, and I love that. And I think that's great. And I think Nick Aldis is probably such a phenomenal representation of the NWA ab above anything else. We had a lot of NWO champions recently. Uh, Storm was a great one. Uh, 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 and uh, Cody. Nick, uh, Cody was another one that was phenomenal. But Nick Aldis is, is such a great champion. And um, I apologize. My dog's so excited about this. He's very uh, excited about the he's NWA. Very excited about the NWA. He loves Billy Corrigan. I don't know why, but uh, but Billy Corrigan says we're going to go on television and we're going to be in Atlanta. Now, if you go, if you put two and two together, you got tradition. You got Atlanta, Georgia. You got which is the home of what do we say? TBS Saturday Turner Night Broadcasting. Who also owns TNT, Dan? Russell or TNT. I don't think Mark, enough backing. I don't either. Backing. I don't either. When and they, I think it, when AEW started, when they started out, he waited too long. He had it for a while. He just waited too long. So now he's actually like below impact by like four steps. So yeah. he has another two, three, maybe four years before he's relevant now. Because now, all the talent is, is going to jump shit. Any talent he has is going to jump shit. Now he's so, getting he's getting new talent now. I mean he's he's got James Storm down in there, and and he's got um, does it matter? All this. He's got a couple other guys, and he's maneuvering stuff around. The NWA is starting to build itself back up again to being something, which is kind of cool. 
But I with AE, off, but no, but God. AEW, he doesn't have the AEW money though. It's all about nope. money. Man. And he doesn't. Right. And he doesn't. And Mark yeah. and I were talking about this off the air. We were saying, like, Mark was, like, saying, is this a big joint thing between AEW and NWA, okay, where, in a way, in a sense, the NWA is the NXT of AEW. Now, that okay? be cool. They can work and, and, and honestly, that would be. I proposed a different scenario. I proposed that... What if Ted Turner signs AEW to TNT, gets in the wrestling business again, then gets traditional NWA, signs them to TBS, which was their motherhood, their mother station yes. for 30 years, okay? Puts them on there for nostalgia purposes, and it's just raking the money in from one, a wrestling company that's got money, and another one that's got tradition. Not even like together will they will they come together, but he's got two wrestling shows on his network. See the difference is with him amongst anybody else, including Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon owns WWE, so he has Raw, SmackDown, stuff like that. But they're shows; they're not networks. Okay, Vince doesn't own networks. So Turner has the complaints. He gets that there's going to be. How about if I put on? Excuse me, Dan. Yes. Vince owns the network, and you should never underestimate the fact. That in 2019, streaming is the way to go. Anyway, what happened was, <laughs> uh, yeah. I go think, I, I mean, honestly, I think that Turner has the ability to sit there and say, I'll take in all the other wrestling that's out there. Right. And make my own network of wrestling, so and so forth. So you're talking about a, a scenario where, uh, you know, he's. Uh, Five, four, go out! Five, four, three, two, one. Where he's over there and he's like, you know what? I'm going to compete with Vince again. And and the funny thing is about it is that if Turner wanted to, AEW and NWA could be your top two wrestling organizations in the world just based on his money alone. Well, if he decides to if he, he decides to put money, WCW. he doesn't he own the NWA. He doesn't own AEW. Yeah. They can have a great working relationship, and I hear what you're saying, but never again. Do not underestimate the fact that Vince McMahon has the network tonight, SummerSlam. We are all watching it. How are we watching it? We are going to log into our nine ninety five a month WWE yeah, network, true. and I we're going to be watching. I will well, be Mark, watching on, Bob's Burgers. On, Mark, I don't want to. I don't want to cut you off, Mark, but Dan kind of has a point. If Ted wanted to, he could buy Impact. He could put sure. it all in together. That's if he chose to. But the man's like 85 years old. I don't think he wants to take that on. But I know he doesn't like Vince. So there's a possibility he might try something. Could you imagine if he bought Impact Wrestling? Okay. They have, they have. And the only reason I know this is because I see it on Facebook. Because otherwise they're on that fishing channel. I have no idea what the hell's going on in the last year. But they got Michael Elgin. Michael Elgin, if you guys have seen Michael Elgin, that guy's a hell of a performer. Of course. Okay? Johnny he's Morrison? I mean, Michael Elgin, nothing to stay on him for a second, but he's like the second coming of Rick Steiner, in a sense. Yeah, he can work. The dude can work. He can work really well. Work. John Morrison. You just said it. John Morrison. What a he great work. worker he is. They overdid him because he was the only thing they had. Yep. So they kind of blew that out real quick. It's kind of like when a... A, a music store gets too too big, and they're like, "All right, dude, I'm done. I don't need to hear anymore." You well, know what I mean? Remember, like, Gar remember Vince? Vince offered him a contract. He goes, "I make more doing what I'm doing. Why? Why would he?" Right. He was. He was right. And he it's the truth. The Go ahead, Dan. Name that third name that's an impact because that's the name that everyone's talking about. Go ahead, say it. Which one? Your your favorite. My favorite. She looks, from good. She looks good. Let me talk about it. Let me see. She's such a diamond. Uh, <laughs> Tessa Blanchard? Tessa I don't know. Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard can beat anybody, male or female, <laughs> first off. The woman, my wife makes fun of me because I'm like, Tessa Blanchard is the sexiest woman on television. And she's like, she looks like Tully Blanchard. Right. I'm like, you know what? I don't know if that's attractive to me for some reason. <laughs> Because I like well, we, never, we never could we never could figure you out, Danny. So I'm not and I couldn't either. You know what I mean? But like I'm looking at her, and I'm seeing Tully, 
but I'm seeing a feminine Tully, and I'm like, oh my god, dude. I'll, I'll do whatever this woman wants. I do not care. She's not calling me back. But I'm just saying, <laughs> Tessa Blanchard is money in the bank, not to coin a phrase from WWE. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to cut you off. She does look a lot sexier than Charlotte compared to her dad, so you got a point. Yeah. <laughs> she seriously does. I mean, if I was going to put a horseman women's division together, I mean, you definitely get Tully. It's a shame that Arn doesn't have a daughter. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then Barry's got – well, he's got what's his face? Bray. That's not his name. He's got yeah, I mean, you know. So you know, he's the know. uncle of Bray, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, he's get you know, or really he could he could use what's his face, Bo Dallas, you know. <laughs> but yeah. ain't, ain't nobody calling him up. But the thing is, though, like she is a wrestler. Okay, Charlotte. Don't take anything away from Charlotte. Let me tell you something. For someone who, if you listen to interviews by her, she did this. As a decision, yeah, not as a choice. Okay, she did not choose to be a wrestler. She's doing it as a decision to honor Reed Flair and and honor her father. But she was she had no intention of being a wrestler. And look how good she is. That yeah, woman can go right. She, she can and go. that and that's genetics. I mean, that's just that's just you know when you say somebody has hands of gold, she has hands Dude, of gold. You, listen. She grew up around it her whole life, so there's nothing she hasn't seen. So, there's, right, and that's, that's my point. And, and, and the, the the sad thing is that is that David Flair can't lace her boots. No, you know what I mean. That's he he's the only one. It it, it like it flew over his head. Well, so like flying Bobby, over yeah, the head. Let like, me bring it back like on Bobby point is, here. Remember, they had the one that sucked. So same thing. Yeah, that's true. Go they ahead, Reed. Two, I'm going to be the Legrand. Sons that are pretty good though. Go ahead, there, Mark. Go ahead. Get me to LeGrand. No, it's okay. I'll be LeGrand because <laughs> we were talking about how Ted Turner would make the NWA relevant again. And yes. then we got off on the you're side. Right, Mark. Yes. <laughs> right, Mark, I'm sorry. I, I, I understand what you're saying, uh, Charles. Yeah. I definitely respect your opinion. And yes, I think Ted Turner could if he wanted to. He uh, wanted I don't to. see that happening. He's too old. He's not going to get yeah. into that right now. Right. Yeah. He is too old. So, yeah. just that, for the record, that was my opinion. It wasn't Charles. But go ahead. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, you respect so, him, not me. It's, it's just my I fucking where, where my stance is, is that if you have the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, which is a very broad, you know, that's a name, the National Wrestling Alliance, yes. could be used as a feeder system. I was telling Dan off air, uh, Josephus who challenged uh, Tim Storm for the NWA title, I think, a year or two ago. Yeah. I never heard of that guy before, um, but he wrestled out of NWA Hollywood, and he's a great wrestler. I mean, I've watched his matches on YouTube. He's a really talented guy, and I never heard of him until uh, Billy Corgan got involved. So I think if the NWA is used in a way that NXT is, now we all know that NXT is far superior from an uh, an entertainment value, at least as far as I'm concerned, than yes. WWE Raw or SmackDown. Uh, they did it again last night. Absolutely. Yes. But if they can use the NWA as a feeder system to make these guys television ready, know where to look for the camera, work on their promo skills. We all know AEW's uh, really focusing on letting these guys write their own promos. They're going to let them have a little bit of freedom. So give them the practice in the NWA, have a TV show so we can see these talents develop. I recall Dan mentioning that on an earlier show where every time we watched the NWA, they were finished products. Well, now we can watch the NWA, watch them grow, watch them get better. And then when the time has come, put them up on AEW, which has the money behind it. So you have, you have a point. we don't know if that's going to happen, but it could. You can put them on late night. You're right. You now, put them on late night. Absolutely. Now, the thing is, though, too, though, there's a couple things that go in, involved in that. Now, do you – I don't want to say tarnish because you're not tarnishing the name, but are you bringing the name down by making it a feeder federation? No, you're not. You're keeping it relevant. I mean, yeah, you are I keeping agree. it relevant. Because, because, well, and you got a point there because it hasn't been relevant for how many years, Mark? Exactly. 20, right. 30, 30 years, something like that. 25 years, it hasn't been relevant. And, 20, 25 so, years. Yeah. and let's also uh, bring up the point that the NWA had a working relationship with Ring of Honor very recently. Uh, they did the Crockett Cup together. Uh, they were working. They kind of had like a, a, a partnership. And yeah. Billy Corgan ended that relationship just a few weeks ago. Uh, so it would make sense to me 
if he did that to work with AEW. I mean, again, this is all speculation. I don't have any inside information, but it, it does. If it is TBS that is a landing spot for a, the NWA, I imagine we have to see a working relationship with AEW. Now, here's the thing, too, with, with AEW, the cons. Uh, excuse me, guys. I got to go. Sorry. Charles, take care, stuff. man. Nice seeing you again. You look great. Okay. I'm sorry, fantastic. Guys. We had something previous, but we'll take care of this. Take this up again. All right. We will. Yes. All right. Now we're going to watch him get out. There we go. I think. You didn't get out. Am I off? <laughs> Shut, Shut up. <laughs> Shut it's up. new technology. I'm going to keep some of this in. <laughs> yeah, just keep some of it in. You know what? I hate you, Mark. <laughs> How the hell do I come up? Uh, there you go. He's All out. Right. <laughs> so now. Here we go. So now we're back. Okay, so now here's the deal. Now you have to talk about this. The cons are businessmen, okay? They could be wrestling marks. I don't know. You don't really get that too, too much. Tony, is, Tony definitely is a mark. The, the yeah. son, right? The son is, yeah. Yeah. Now, um, it could be from a business standpoint that although it's not a good business decision to go head-to-head -head with the WWE – in a sports entertainment realm, but they could be trying to compete in some fashion to be that number two guy. Sure. Let's face it, if, you're, if you are the number two guy, you're making money. Well, there's, there's, not, there's nothing to be ashamed of to be the number two guy with Absolutely. WWE being your number one because there really is no level below the WWE at this point. I know, I know where you're going with this, but I'm going to stop you right there because – the, the big rumor that has come out over the last 24 hours yeah. is that NXT may be going to Fox Sports 1 to oppose AEW on TNT. The rumor last night at, at uh, uh, SummerSlam at NXT TakeOver was that the WWE NXT will be moving to two hours going to FS1 to compete with AEW. And if that's the case, let me tell you something. I, for one, love the direction that AEW is going. I've enjoyed their uh, their events uh, thus far. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of momentum behind them, and we all know that Vince McMahon likes to crush and screw with his competition. Yeah. If this does, in fact, happen, I'm going to be very upset as a wrestling fan, and I'll tell you why. Because NXT, hands down, is probably my favorite wrestling to watch right now. Last night's show did nothing but prove my point. That show right. from top to bottom could hold its own against anything from the 70s or 80s, if you ask me. The fans are getting behind it. It is not a minor league. It's, it's what it maybe started out as in the beginning, but right now NXT is its own entity, its own style, its own business. And you know what? You can thank John Paul Levesque for that. I, absolutely. Really sure he can. And, 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 and you can, and if, when, and if the time comes that he can take over SmackDown and Raw, you can then thank him for that. Well, we hope, we hope, so. down. we hope, we yeah. hope that it would be more of that NXT style. Uh, I don't think it will be. I think, you know, we talked about this before. There's a reason why Fox and USA spent billions of dollars to get WWE programming. They yeah. obviously like something they saw. That's fine. As long as NXT is still able to do their thing, that's fine too. Right. But if we're going to go against AEW, now it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like the Monday Night Wars. I'm going to be forced to watch one or the other. I want to watch both. And I want to support both because NXT has the, the history of the last what is years. What is different But what is different now than, was di than what was during the Monday Night Wars? DVR. What is different now? DVR. Well, we sure, didn't have DVR. DVR. We didn't have DVR well, that's back true. on the money that yeah. wars. We had unreliable VHS tapes. Right. True. Right or wrong. So yeah. now I got news for you. You can watch neither one of those shows and then on Saturday morning watch them both. You could. I mean uh, that's that's the reality of it. And now I do know that they go by DVR as well, as far as a rating system is concerned. Yeah, the Nielsen rating does factor and, in DVR. And, and it has to because of the fact that. People just aren't home watching TV. They're working. They're living lives and stuff like that. And there are wrestling fans that we personally know 
that will sit there and take off for work to watch wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's well. I hope good. she's watching now. I, right, right, <laughs> right. Exactly. Set some up. Send some up north for us. You know, I, mean, I know she thought she knows where she is. But but the thing <laughs> is though, with that, yeah, right. But the thing is though, with that, um, you're talking about um now you're talking about I you have to fit in my schedule. And something that was happening, and I think you mirrored this in a way a little bit, but something was happening with me was I was and you know I was a fan of impact and I could take the ups and downs with it and stuff like that, but I was a fan of what they were doing and they were building it up and it was getting better, but I was getting tired of what, like I have to watch impact. I got to watch this. I got to watch that. And, and it's a shame because I don't watch NXT as much as I would like to, because I like NXT. I'm not a WWE guy. You know, this, this is documented on this show, but I love NXT because they do such a great job. They, it's a wrestling show. <laughs> the, the the um sports entertainment is dialed down a little bit. It brings you back to wrestling. We see better, we see younger talent. We have Mauro and Allo, who is just today's voice of wrestling. Oh, Mario! I love him. <laughs> love him to death. He, he was on phenomenal. fire last night. <laughs> He's phenomenal. I just love him and I want him to have every show possible. You know, but um, you know, when it comes down to it, I want to sit there and maybe wait till Saturday throw on my DVR and get through my stuff. That's what I do Saturday, Sunday morning. Sunday morning, like I get up, my kids know. I wake up at like around nine o'clock in the morning and I start going through my, and I got to watch like six, seven shows, an hour here, an hour there, whatever. I got to get through shit because I got to free up my DVR for Monday morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that that's my schedule. That, and that's real life schedule now. You know what I mean? Um, do we want to watch wrestling live? Yeah, sure we do. Um, well, I don't know. Just on it. What do we have now that we didn't have back then? We had D we have DVR now. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we had the internet back then, but we didn't have social media back then. No. So the reason why I'm a little nervous is that if I go on Facebook while I'm watching one of the shows, I'm going to see something pop up of a spoiler from the other one. So you're, it's going to be a, a interesting if that happens. I mean, if you go back to it's a wrestling match. You know, just like, do you consider uh, if someone tells you the the uh, the score of a football game a spoiler? Some people would. I mean, if, if I, mean, I, was I guess some people and, would, but like, it's a sporting event. It depends. If we're talking about the Eagles and they won, then I'm going to watch the game anyway. As if much lose, as, I, <laughs> as much as I know, right? As <laughs> much as I love NWA, and as much as I lived for WCW Saturday Night. At six oh five, I could tell you right now, looking back, my excitement level was nowhere near as high as during the Monday Night Wars. Sure, it wasn't. Well, I that's was because they had cliffhangers that made you want to tune in to next week. Right now, I was one of those people that did, did did not go over to WWF during the commercials or anything. Oh. To see what happened. I didn't because honestly. The Nitro product versus the Raw product were two totally different things. And I just, when I turned on the Raw product, my excitement level went down. I, and, I that's, and that's me. That. That's just me. Right. That's not, that's I will, not I will give you that. Yeah. It's just I will me. give it's, you that from 95, 96, and part yeah. of 97. It was but just after 97, once the Heart Foundation came back on Raw... I did the complete opposite. I would watch, well, you know, Raw was taped every other week. So I didn't have to worry about it every other week. But I would flip back yeah. and forth when it was live because it, it it was interesting to me and not more so than WCW at the time. But, you know, it, it, I remember the night um, I had some people over at my house, some of my friends, when Ric Flair and Eric Bischoff had their real life controversy and Ric yeah. Flair came back to form the Horsemen with uh, Malenko, Benoit, and Anderson, and Mongo. That was a huge night. That yeah. I remember watching that live versus the live Raw. I also remember watching the live Goldberg defeating Hogan. Huge. I didn't even think I flipped the channel to Raw that night. But every other night, I was going back and forth. I was doing, like you said, using the unreliable tape, uh, videotape, making sure that I was taping one so yeah. I could watch the other. 
um, because you didn't want to miss it. It was must see TV. Yes. And, and, and if these products like NXT, who I have confidence in, can deliver must see TV, well, then that's going to put more pressure on AEW to well, succeed. Well. Let's, let's analyze it super quick. When you were on watching Nitro, mm -hmm. okay, first of all, the music alone, da, 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 it was like high energy, electrifying, oh my God, something's going to explode music. You were waiting for Pyro to go off every second. second. You seem to forget the theme song of Raw in the era, in the nineties. The we're all together. We weren't all together. We were over on WCW side. But what happened was, but like the thing was too, like the commentators on both sides were excited. Okay, Tony Schiavone, Bobby Bobby Heenan. How about yep. Bob, I mean Bobby Heenan, God bless rest his soul. Mm -hmm. That man made everything like holy shit. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, he was a phenomenal broadcast journalist. As and then Jim him. Ross, Vince McMahon, and Jerry Lawler on the other side. So now the problem I had was, and I think this was maybe their direction, was Jerry Lawler's portrayal of a oh, yeah, Mr. McMahon. Oh, oh. He was like a he was like a jester. And that annoyed me as a as a wrestling fan. <laughs> just because I'm like, all right, what are you laughing about? I don't understand. Like, this is serious business here. Why are you laughing? And and let's face it, too. That was the rated R era. So you had puppies galore. And, like, mm -hmm. we had the Nitro Girls, but we weren't, like, focusing the whole show on the Nitro Girls. Okay? we were. There was still wrestling, a lot of wrestling. And you have to admit, during Raw, during Nitro, there was more wrestling happening on Nitro mm -hmm. than it was on Raw. Because Raw really was embracing that sports entertainment. And they were embracing the soap opera aspect of, I'm going to get to keep these fans enthralled because of what I'm saying, not because of what I'm doing. And, and that was their directive that they did. And with Nitro, it was like, yeah, this shit's happening. But man, what? Now we're going to watch them take care of business. Because why? We had guys like Arn Anderson who were like, I'll take care of my shit in the ring. You know what I mean? I'm a badass. I'm going to show you. Give me five seconds. I'm walking in the ring. You know, that didn't happen in the WWE. And let's face it, though, too. Go back to the 80s. WWE was always a lot softer than NWA was, than WCW was, because in the NWA, it was like a bar fight that fell out of the bar and into the ring. <laughs> okay, right or wrong? I mean, that's what it was. Whereas in the WWE, I've heard of the page of a comic book. And I've seen it in the panel. Oh, he's saying this and he's saying that. And blah, blah, blah. now Duke the Dumpster Trozzi is coming out. And like, you know, whatever this BS is, you know, but whatever. But like, and I'm using the worst possible guy from the WWE. You know? yeah. <laughs> Completely, I realize that. But like, you know, it was a scenario where you and I both know, like if we watched primetime wrestling, we saw a phenomenal wrestling show. Sure, absolutely. And I, and I personally, as a wrestling fan, Loved primetime wrestling a hell of a lot more than I loved, loved WWF superstars. Even uh, though yeah. superstars, superstars drove the show, drove the storylines, but I was watching wrestling on primetime wrestling. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that was the reality of it, that I wanted to see those matches. I wanted to see these one-off, oh, the tag team champions are feuding with the Horror Foundation, but they're wrestling the Killer Beast tonight. I want to see that. You know what I mean? You don't see that nowadays. These guys, if I'm going to be fighting with you, Mark, they're going to see us for the next 18 weeks. <laughs> it's just you and me. Forget about wrestling anybody else. It's just you and me, buddy. That's it. And <clears throat> I'm sorry, that gets old to me yeah. after a while. It gets very old. I want to see why you're an opposing threat. I want to mm -hmm. see why I'm an opposing threat. That was it goes back to jobbers. I mean, sure. it, it really does. But and if you notice now, the enhancement talent is slowly kind of coming back, but it's being used sparingly. Well, for certain reasons, you have someone yeah. like Paul Heyman, like the the War Raiders on Raw. You yeah. know, they've been they've been using jobbers for them to make them look good. They're building them up, which is smart. Yeah, a lot of times, like these teams would come from NXT. The NXT audience loved them; they knew them. the The Raw audience, while some of them watch NXT, let's be honest, a lot of them don't. So. They needed to market them to the yeah. new audience, the larger audience. It's so in order to do that, they had to show that these guys mean something. So, yes, they're bringing some jobbers back. War Raiders are, are, are demolishing their opponents. And you know one day they're going to step in the ring with 
uh, I don't know, the, the uh, now they're, now they're the rider or somebody they're else. The, they're the guys that were from ROH, weren't they? Uh, yeah, the uh, Roe and uh, Hanson, I think. Yeah, they like, yeah. like the one guy was like their top prospect. Yeah, then, they won the, the, the top prospect tournament back. I forget. Yeah, what and, and the one yeah. guy was out with a car. It was in a car accident. He had an injury. And so the one main guy was, I forget their names, but like the one main guy was like the, was the big guy in ROH. And then the other guy came back and then they were wrestling again. I remember that. The guys I like, and they got a little bit of shine at a recent pay per view were that um, they're the ones that look like they're like a construction crew. Who are they? Um, the two real big guys from 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 NXT. Authors were, of pain. Which one? Authors of pain, not authors of pain. No, 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 no. They impressed me in the beginning, but no, not them. Uh, they they almost like have that like construction gimmick going. They got like their black tights with yellow, and they're oh, both gosh. huge guys. And they were just in the tag team thing on the last pay per view. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I can't think their names. Yeah. Right, yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and I know they're NXT guys, and then when I saw them, I'm like, oh, I love these guys. These guys are really good because they're agile 380-pounders. And I can't think of – one guy's got long hair, one guy's got short hair, I think, something like that. Um, I can't think of their name, but they're really, really good. It's like not a construction crew or something like that, but there's there's something. They got like roadblock signs on them. and So I, I don't know. They're, they're huge guys that are really good. I like them. Uh, but that's the kind of stuff I like. And, and it's a shame because the tag team division is very short in the WWE, period, because they don't like tag team wrestling. Now, hopefully that's going to They're getting change. better. They're getting a lot better. You got to give them credit. You got the uh, the, the yeah. Revival. Uh, you Lava. got the Usos. Uh, yeah. Usos are really good. Uh, if they can just stay out of DUIs, they'll be in good shape. Uh, <laughs> of course, um, the, the club, you know, um, those guys must have signed a contract because they're getting pushed again. Uh, so they have potential tag teams and, you know, let's give credit where it's due. Um, you know, those of us internet marks who, who read all these news stories, we know that Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff are running Raw and SmackDown. We were told that you weren't going to see a notice like, like, like one week it's Vince McMahon running it. The next week it's Paul Heyman. They're slowly integrating the Paul Heyman style into Raw. And there are a lot of things or a lot more things I should say that I liked about Raw recently than I have in the past, but it's still, it needs a lot of improvement. Tag team wrestling is one of them. Another thing they've added, if, if you've noticed is two out of three fall matches, which I think is great. You know, the, the WWE and, and, and we have to go soon, Dan, I know, yeah. but the WWE 50, 50 booking. And, and what that meant was, is that you could have wrestler a and wrestler B and they trade victories. Yeah. But then neither one of them is closer to that next step of getting to the world title. Yeah. Well, you can have 50-50 booking if you have two superstars. If you had Stone Cold and The Rock, then it made sense to have them trade victories because they were just constantly at the top. But yeah. if you're trying to establish talent to be important, then you can't do 50-50 booking. You have to have a clear one and a clear 1B and let them feed off of each other. And I've noticed that with the tag team scene lately where you have the revival and the Usos just going back and forth to having great matches. And, yes. you know, the revival means something to them now, which you didn't really get for a long time there. They were just underused and they should have gone back to NXT. Thank God they are being used properly. So you have to give some credit to some changes are happening that are really good. They have a lot more uh, to go, in, in my opinion. Well, they do, and they, and they do, and I'm hoping it goes better because in the end, we'll all benefit from it. And then we'll know those construction guys' names on NXT. Because we will. We'll know those guys because I'm giving you guys props, man. I'm I like seeing them. I, don't, I can't think of the names for the life of me. They were just in the last pay-per-view. They were in, the, in the, the triple threat. It was like a triple yeah. threat tag match. Yeah. And I was like, I love these guys. They're great. And yeah, it was meanwhile, uh, you have, uh, what, Hawkins and uh, what's his name? Uh, the Street Profits. They're they're on Raw. They don't wrestle, but to, dude, they're. I, I don't want to get in trouble for saying this, but they, they are great on the mic. They're like an Enzo and Cass, where okay. like they're in backstage segments every week and they're being relevant, but they're no, not. They're, they're, ring, which is no, fine. They're, they're, if I was able to book, what I would do, bring back crying time. Why? <laughs> great tag Why? team, dude. Why? Don't even disrespect those guys. I'm Wait. not. 
Great tag team. Crime time. Bring them back in there. Uh -huh. Okay. They can feud with the Usos. It's street versus street if you want to go that route with a gimmick. Sure. Call. Okay. Um, the Revival, they're the second coming of Blanchard and Anderson. Yes. Yeah. They truly are. So let's give them somebody worthy of, of going against. And, well, and bring up the Undisputed Era, and then you have Fish and O'Reilly going after them. There you go. There you go. Or, I mean, granted, I mean, everything is redone. That's that's why it happened. I, I always like to do original, but if you want to redo, like, the Blanchard and Anderson Rock and Roll Express feud, get me some teeny bopper guys that are going to be, like, almost like the energy of, uh, and I'll get something for this, like the dynamic dudes. You know what I mean? Where they, they're, I'm here for the, the fans, and I'm here for the girls, and blah, blah, blah. And we're these nice-looking guys, and the revival are going to kick our ass. I mean, I don't realize it. But, you know, I'm going to give them – I'm going to give this high-energy comeback, but they're going to kick our ass again. I would love to see that because I think that's that's something that tag team wrestling really did good. You had the ring technician that cut off the ring and stopped your hero from doing what he had to do, and that hero had such tenacity and such courage – to fight through all the pain and to fight through everything to try. How how many times did Ricky Morton make you be like, oh my God, tag Robert Gibson, tag him, <laughs> and like you know what I mean? And like, oh, okay, I'll do the thing. Like he had no charisma at all. But like, still, go ahead. He jumps in there and they do a double drop kick and like we're supposed to re realize that knocks people out or whatever. I don't know. But like, that's the kind of stuff I think would really like prove. But once again, you're getting back to now AEW and possibly NWA, which is what we're talking about today. Because you're talking about old school wrestling where we're telling a story in the ring. And what I did there was tell a story. I have the bad guys who are in control. They're in charge. They're stopping the front. And meanwhile, my good guys who are trying to defeat evil are trying. They're getting down. They're getting pushed down. They're trying to come back up, but they're getting pushed down. And that's yep. a classic story, storytelling in the ring. That's what I think fans are wanting. And that's why I think a lot of fans are moving to AEW and to NWA because the tr this tradition thing that they're talking about. Oh my right. God, go figure. I'm going to see a good match and I'm enjoying this match. Wow, how crazy is that? And <laughs> maybe the thing about AEW, um, I, I dare you to name, I don't think you can name two or three guys who are more hotter right now than John Moxley. Right. Uh, that guy, you know, he right. left during the, you can say it was a prime of his WWE run. He, he gave notice and WWE still featured them a lot in their programming. They gave yeah. him, they made a special on the network for his last night. I really don't think they thought he was going to go to AEW. And when he did, he went there with so much fanfare and, and changed. He just gave that. Trust me, the young bucks, Cody, Kenny Omega, they are stars. They will do fine. But when you add somebody like a Moxley, that just lit them and set them over the edge. And, WB has those guys. The yeah. I don't think the NWA does. I think Nick Aldis is a great champion. I yes. think there's talent. I know Colt Cabana has wrestled for them. I James Storm is the North American. They have the talent, but I don't think there's that one guy that's going to do for them what John Moxley did for AEW. Um, and I'm just excited because you know we're we're right now we're in August. It's August 11th, or maybe the 12th, or whatever time you're watching this. And the fact is, is that this this is a great time. This is the the, the, the pre-dawn of a new, hopefully new, modern era of wrestling. And I can't yeah. wait, man. I'm, I'm excited. And, 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 I, it's, and you know it's, why we're excited? It has to be you know, good. You know why we're excited, though, honestly? Because we're going to have something else to watch. Yes. Yeah. It's not honest truth. You can love WWE. And I make fun of people, and I call them sheep and this, that, and the other thing. But, hey, you like what you like. All right? And that's fine. And I don't like WWE, but it's like whatever. But you know what? At the end of the day, I think everybody agrees to it. The WWE driving out their competition and being the only man on campus made their ratings go down. They put themselves Absolutely. in the position that they're in. Yeah. They really did. Nobody else did. You can blame writing. You can blame other stuff. But you know no, what? You can't. No, you can't. You I can't think if the, the WCW, WCW was still around, okay, and let's say the wars didn't happen or the buyout. Let's say the buyout didn't happen. Yeah, ratings could fluctuate. But the writing the way it is right now would still make that show just as popular right. as it was before. I think the fact is now we're taking notice of stuff because we have nothing else to compare it to. And that's what it comes down to. Competition breeds success. 
It always has. It always will. And McMahon, if this is what you're doing, if you're saying, hey, I want to buy out my competition and squash it, if that makes you feel better at the end of the night, fine. But you're only digging your own grave because you're causing fans to sit there and say, you know what? Maybe I'll go watch that UFC thing and see yeah. what's going on over there. You and know? to be fair, uh, Forbes magazine, who have, uh, you know, for you guys who go on the internet, Forbes magazine over the last several months has made several articles uh, related to wrestling. And Stephanie McMahon was interviewed this past week, and uh, she told Forbes that um, she was asked about AEW. And she said, I think competition, I think I think we're all going to win. The fans are going to win. And and the wrestlers have been saying it for, for since it was announced. They're going to have a chance to win because now they'll go somewhere where they can negotiate a contract, have a little bit more power. So we are just – it's going to start soon, Dan. Uh, I, I'm and, you know what though, and you know what, though, too? You, we mentioned John Moxley, who was a big, big star, and he moves over. Okay? Mm -hmm. What does that do? Does they lose John Moxley? Yeah. But what they also lose is paying him. Okay? Right. So now that money can get allocated to somebody else. Sure. WWE is not thirsting for talent. Nope. They are the not. The talent's there. We all the we can agree all there. There. The talent's and always they there. And they don't it's have enough. Booking. They don't have enough booking for their talent. Right. It's a bottom, it's a god honest truth. The way they book right now. Now, granted, if I go back to 86, 87, NWA booked everybody and their brother. I could have got a match at 10 years old. It wouldn't have mattered. You know what I mean? But they booked everybody, and you still heard about the promo and stuff like that. That was a different era where your actual stuff that was driving your show didn't even have to wrestle. Right. Imagine that for a second. Your big things were Ric Flair against Dusty Rhodes. Didn't see them wrestle. Nope. Oh, uh, Nikita, Nikita Koloff and Magnum TA for the United States title. I didn't have to see him wrestle. What am I watching? I'm watching Rocky King get his ass kicked yeah. by by uh, Barry Windham. You know, I'm watching the Italian Stallion and Kendall Windham wrestle the Midnight Express, mm -hmm. who are not in anything right now. You know, that's, that's what my show was with my story being everything else around it. So right. I'm watching wrestling while I'm hearing what's going on. That was a great show and could happen now. But well, Dan, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because a topic for our next show mm -hmm. is going to be also that house shows. Yeah. Uh, AEW is not doing house shows. No. And the WWE is slowly eliminating them with the new fall programming, SmackDown moving to Friday, of course, Monday Night Raw on Mondays, and potentially NXT on Wednesday. Yes. Is going to change the entire ho uh, house show loop for the WWE. So something to talk about on our next episode. Yeah, it will be because you know what we were we were the fans of the house shows. How many house shows did we go to all the time? All the time. All on the a time. Basis in Philadelphia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's good. It's one. It's something to say that AEW is coming to Philadelphia in October for yeah, a TV taping. For a TV taping, yeah. it, it'll be at the the League Core Center, uh, mm -hmm. right by Temple. So that's going to yeah. be a real fun yeah. thing to check out. I, I, Hey, I'm going to try and get tickets. I have a feeling it's going to sell out in five minutes. If you look I at all good. the shows yeah. AEW has done so far, they've sold out in minutes. So I'm going to try and get my tickets for that show. That's going to be and a let me tell you something. If you're going to watch it, want to watch a wrestling show, it's going to be a wrestling show for AEW in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Because those fans are going to go crazy. We're going to appreciate crazy. it. Absolutely, yeah. We're going to totally appreciate it. And it's going to, you're going to see a lot of things happen. Um, will Impact do anything? I just want to bring them up because nobody's talking about them right now. <laughs> what? Will Impact do anything? Are they watching the show right now? I don't know. <laughs> I, for your sake, I hope Tess is. I hope she is too. Oh, I hope she is too. <laughs> Guys, what a great thing. Check it out. There's a lot to coming on. October is going to be the month to watch because not only is it going to be Halloween, but it's going to be the day that AEW and NWA come to town. You're going to want to love it. It's going to be a great thing. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you're sharing the channel to everybody. Once again, the link is www.youtube.com slash C slash DJB Productions Network. We're going to have it in the bumpers. We're going to have everything here. We're going to share this out on Facebook. Remember, join us on Facebook at That Way Cool Wrestling Show. Like it and share it. And for Mark, for Charles, who was on air, LeGrand, who couldn't be on the show today, guys, until next time, we'll see you at the matches. Have a great day, everybody.